Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to VG Myths, the online internet video game TV show that solves mysteries, has always solved mysteries, and is totally unsurprised by the accusation of ever having been associated with busters of the myth variety. In Rockman 5, Rock's brother Blues has finally revealed where his heart lies, demanding Rockman's prior cheesy no-damage victories be revoked. He's sending out eight new bosses in an effort to end our damageless quest with one unavoidable shot. Can you beat Rockman 5 without getting hit? The rules are the same as always. Beat the game and don't get hit. That means the entire game all in one go from start to finish. Save scumming is banned. If we reach the final boss and we get hit, we reset and go all the way back to the title screen. Our version of choice will specifically be the one in the Rockman Classics collection, but obviously all emulator features are banned. No rewind, no save states, no auto fire, and no turbo. With the rules set, let's get this run started. First, we'll need to plan our stage order. Starman and Gravity Man's weapons are both top priority, and grabbing both will put us in an obvious weakness chain through the remaining six bosses. However, as useful as their weapons are, they won't help us in the hardest stage, Wave Man which will be our first visit. Half of this stage is an ultra-simple obstacle course that can be done buster only, no problem, while the second half is an on-rails jet ski shmup minigame. This shmup is the absolute hardest damageless section not just of the initial eight stages, but of the entire game. And boss weapons are completely unavailable on the jet ski. Since it's the hardest level in the game, and there's no way to make it easier, there's no reason not to get it out of the way first. And since it comes first, there's no reason to get good at it. Rhythmically tapping the buster with occasional jumps works well enough to get me through damageless sometimes, and when it only takes a couple minutes to get back sometimes is all you need. The Octorok takes more direct effort. It will always shoot at your current position at the time it reaches the top of its arc. Stay at water level and jump immediately after the queue. During the second shmup screen, you'll have to go out of your way to grab a unique collectible guarded by two dolphins, the letter O. If you don't manage to grab it, consider the run a failure. Each of the initial eight stages contains a letter. Collecting all eight letters is the only way to beat the final boss. With the shmup over, you'll have a short and easy encounter with a twin cannon before challenging Wave Man. The wavy spawns on the ground can hit an unaware player at seemingly no fault of their own, but there's a trick to dodging it. Don't! It specifically spawns a random distance away from Rockman's position at the time Waveman lands. Thus, standing still guarantees survival. You'll only have to focus on dodging the spears and Waveman himself until he's sent packing to Davy Jones' locker. With the hardest stage out of the way, we can go after the boss weapons we initially had our eyes on. Ever coincidentally, we'll be starting with the boss Water Wave is strong against, Starman. On Starman's first screen, the falling meteors are random, but give enough time to dodge on sight. These bounder guys will fire two angled bullets either when you approach or fire at them, which, if you stand still, will usually fly straight by. Note for the pop-up turrets, a charge shot is wide enough to hit them before they've popped out of the ground. This next screen introduces a flying turret that fires the same angled pattern with the same dodging strat. In the blue room, you can jump up for the letter M. It also introduces Space Mets. I recommend memorizing every one of their locations so you can spam pellets at them before they legally exist. Climbing up this ladder is a trap with three jet bombs that explode into homing shrapnel. Time a jump over all three such that the shrapnel flies above you at the end of your arc. A pathetically free turret room is next, followed by an almost as pathetic dacho. It can't hit you while standing at the far left, so pot shots take it out with zero risk. The next screen you'll have to be ready for in advance, with a mid-air charge blast eliminating half an ambush. Continue forward, obliterating each met until this spike bit. Missiles will pop out of the gaps between platforms on approach. Let them come up in advance and jump over while they retreat. Each platform also has a toss machine, some on platforms below you. Take advantage of your extra jump height to fly over both them and their Bullets. The final screen features another Dachung, which might technically be able to hit you if it gets too close. A well-timed jump at the left wall will keep you safe. 
Starman himself is easy buster only, and with Water Wave, he's pathetic. Water Wave erases projectiles, and Starman's shield is legally a projectile. Keep throwing waves until he's pulled under. With Star Crash and Super Arrow on our belts, we move on to our next target, Gravity Man. The majority of this stage will be straightforward with the Buster. Keep in mind the flipping enemies can fire bullets at you, but they always wait a second. Plenty of time to blast them. A note when falling through this screen, there's a turret on your right side and a spike pit on your left. Keep to the middle of the screen with a charge shot at the ready. Continue mopping up turrets until reaching this spot where the ceiling opens into a bigger room. Get a charge ready, slide under the power muscler at the top of its arc, and obliterate the far turret to make your escape into the next screen. Don't mind the gravity shifts, just charge shot everybody as you see them, and don't forget to grab the letter R. When climbing down to the next screen, equip Star Crash. The shield will automatically eat enemies such as these Puka Pellies when they run into you. Hug the wall while falling into the next screen and rush into the boss fight against Gravity Man. He can only swap gravity and jump while standing at specific screen positions, and only walks towards his next position. This gives him a blind spot at the edges, with the right edge being the safer of the two. Don't worry, even if he hugs the right wall and fires a shot, it will always be a moment too late, allowing you to sidestep and drop him. Bring gravity hold into the next level, Euromance. This stage features a ton of shield turrets. A single charge shot will obliterate them, and their bullets are slow, so they shouldn't pose any any danger. Up this ladder, equip Rush Coil, bounce up to the weapon energy to refill what you just used, and jump clean over the spike traps. Cocos spawn Korokoros that walk towards you. Rhythmically destroy the Korokoro, jump to hit the Coco, and repeat. On the upper ledge, charge up a shot, jump forward and fire to take out one Lyric. Then swap to Star Crash and eat everybody on the way to the next screen. Here you'll be ambushed by three Pukapellis. In situations like this, the obvious solution is to unleash Gravity Hold, a screen nuke capable of instantly erasing small enemies. Take the top path on this next screen, where you can time a charge blast to annihilate a Lyric and a Twin Cannon. Note for the future, Twin Cannons will always fire their top cannon when fired at, but that projectile is destructible, making a charge blast a safe option. Climb up, butter the power muscler, then retreat. He's incapable of smashing down, but you can crash up. Up the ladder, you'll encounter Coca Qs. When standing still, they can't touch you. However, these next platforms fall when you walk on them, so standing still is not an option. Instead, we'll be outpacing them with our first use of Super Arrow. We can't go the whole trip, though. We'll have to hop off and make an extremely stressful falling jump for the letter K. In the Falling Spike Maze, jump up to the next platform rather than waiting for it to come to you. The exception is the fifth set of platforms. Instead, hug the left side and perform a slide as soon as you start walking. Equip Gravity Hold before the next screen to ambush an ambush. A few more turrets can be taken out with the Buster, but the final turret is too low. Swap to Water Wave and catch it when it touches the wall. Obliterate the final Twin Cannon and challenge Euro Man. His pattern is mindlessly simple, and his weakness is a screen nuke. With Euro Man sent flying and his bizarrely named weapon Gyro Attack in hand, enter Crystal Man. The Charge Buster should safely get you to these falling crystals where Star Crash is absolutely required to get through Damageless consistently. Sit back, wait for a crystal to fall past, activate Star Crash, and jump forward. When done properly, even if a crystal literally spawns inside Rockman, Star Crash will scoop it out. You're gonna need a lot of Star Crash ammo, and luckily, Eddie makes a return to help out. Just like in Rockman 4, Eddie will re-roll his item drop if you refuse to collect it, so you're always guaranteed the item you're looking for. When climbing up this ladder, equip Gravity Hold, annihilate the commons on the next screen, buster the last two, say hello, and say goodbye to the shield attackers as you effortlessly fly above. Don't worry about the last one, it won't touch the right wall. Quickly switch to the buster on the next screen to take out a bomber, wait for the lower bomber to pass, collect an incredibly important E-Tank, jump to the left with Gravity Hold, and send the next screen's bomber ambush packing. This screen can be safely traversed with the buster, but you'll want to make a detour for that M-Tank. Jump up the right side, but don't get too close. Charge up a buster shot first and take out the mouse. Grab the M-Tank while being careful not to move too far left and respawn the enemies, and get back to the main path. 
When jumping down this spike maze, get yourself flush with the left wall, completely let go of the D-pad on screen 2, and start holding left at the screen 3 transition to dodge the spikes and collect the letter 5. Subales can duck too low to hit with standard pellets, but just like pop-up turrets, a charge shot solves that problem. You'll need a preemptive charge before the next screen for a particularly bloodthirsty Subale on the left. Star Crash is a safer alternative, but I'd prefer to conserve the ammo. Baby Strat, the final power muscler, and Star Crash, Crystal Man's party. Crystal Man will always begin with his most dangerous attack, jumping in the air to throw four bouncing crystals in every diagonal direction. These bouncing patterns, combined with Crystal Man's continued attacks, are way too complex for me to brain think, but Star Crash simplifies the equation. Let the first two crystals come to you, then carefully time a slide under Crystal Man to erase the third. With only one crystal left, brain thinking is now feasible and the fourth crystal will despawn on its own after a couple seconds. If you're lucky, you'll only have to do this once, but if Crystal Man's feeling particularly mean, he might do it again. Either way, once the equation is simplified, swap to Gyro Attack and chop Crystal Man into dust. Get equipped with Crystal Eye and turn your sights on Napalm Man. Here we're introduced to Sumatorons. Memorize all their locations, charge up the buster in advance, and let it loose slightly above. For this one way below us, swap to Water Wave and flush it away. The next screen has a close encounter with two Met Cannons and two Tabons. Met Cannon shots are destructible with a single pellet, so you're safe as long as you steadily fire as they come up. When climbing up this ladder, absolutely do not forget to navigate the invisible pathway for an E-Tank. This next screen is a bit tricky, so we're not gonna bother. Take out the first two Sue Bales from safety, equip Super Arrow, and throw some friendly insults at Joe as you cruise into the middle of a Sue Bale nest. Swap to Gravity Hold to hurtle them towards extinction. Joe is politely insisting we repeat what we said earlier. Dodge the question with a distracting gyro attack and escort him out the attic door. Grab a latte from Eddie, summon Rush Jet, and sip that latte during a relaxing jungle cruise. At the final stop, loop down to collect the letter N. Careful on the next screen, a Met Cannon is immediately to your left. You'll want to enter with Star Crash for safety. Be very careful in this hallway. There are a ton of jet bombs who can easily trick you into respawning them if you make even the slightest adjustment to the left. The first will be at ground level, the second at the ceiling, the third a bit above the next ledge, and the fourth flush with the ledge. There's a power muscler past here who's incapable of reaching you and is thus totally defenseless. After this next ledge is three jet bombs in a row who will fly straight over you. Equip Gravity Hold to jump over the spikes and fire to blow the last jet bomb up. When falling past these spikes, get your buster ready to immediately eliminate the bomb thrown and jump over its bomb's explosion. Careful not to get too excited and forget about the missiles, which I'm certain solely exist to end damageless runs in the most embarrassing way possible. Once you're past them all, equip Crystal Eye to fight Napalm Man. Napalm Man can thankfully be controlled. As long as you keep within a decent distance, you can trap him in an infinite loop, jumping over his bombs and sliding under him. The loop will finally end with Napalm Man in flames. With Napalm Bomb acquired, enter Stone Man Stage. This level features Met Mommies who drop three small Mets on defeat. The small Mets don't shoot projectiles, so you mostly just have to worry about the Mommy. Approach while firing the Buster to take her out before she can shoot. Throughout the stage, you'll see a lot of Tabots. Take out groups of multiple with Gravity Hold. If they're way above you on a scrolling screen, instead use Gyro Attack to save on ammo. In this screen, after taking out the two Sue Bales, hit the lower right wall with the Buster to reveal a secret passageway to the letter C. When climbing back out, ignore the Met Mommy and use Star Crash for safety. The same trick can be used to slip past the Mommy on the next screen, too. There's a rock thrown over here who will try to psych you out by throwing rocks at the ceiling. It doesn't work. At the end of this room is a slightly smarter rock thrown, perfectly arcing its rock over a pit. Equip Gyro Attack, fire at the same moment he does, and redirect for a super stylish takedown. On this next screen is the first appearance of Herarians. Their pattern is simple, they die painfully and horribly. The upper Met Mommy is a little scary, you'll have to run up to shoot it and quickly about face. In this Herarian room, there's a secret passage to an M-Tank hidden behind the right wall. We don't need it since you can only hold on to one M-Tank at a time, but make sure you blow up the wall anyway. It might help the next person playing the game. 
Here we find a sequence of pits with shield turrets and lyrics. Charge shots are good enough for most of these, but for more treacherous turrets, switch to gyro attack. The body of the turret is always vulnerable, so you can take them out from a totally safe angle. After climbing up to this screen, swap to Rush Coil and use him to bounce up into a secret path and obtain an extra life. Liberally gravity hold and rush jet until you reach the boss door, equip Star Crash, and enter battle with Stone Man. Run under Stone Man's first jump and eat a rock. The other rock will despawn off screen after the end of its first arc. That was just for a tiny bit of extra safety. This guy's a pushover. Stick close, slide under when running out of space, and keep dropping bombs to turn Stone Man into rubble. We've only got one boss left, Charge Man. The first screen introduces Renbakun. If you stop moving as soon as Renbakun spawns, none of the missiles will hit you, so they should never give you any trouble on any screen they appear. Up on the train proper, you'll be attacked by train mats. If one of these is on a ledge above you, stand still. The bullets will fly straight by, then you can counterattack. There are some trickier train mats further along who we will not be meeting. Call Rush Jet and fly aligned with the top of the outer wall to clear the entire screen. Inside the train is a Coco. Let it spawn a bunch of Korokoros and farm them for weapon energy. You're gonna want to use Rush Jet again, and I like to grab just a little bit extra for safety. After the next couple mice is a precariously positioned Coco whose Korokoros can't be hit with the buster until after they're jumping into you. Equip Water Wave, fire it from the left edge, and scroll the screen to take out the first Korokoro. Then you can swap back and forth with the buster until the Coco is gone. Starting from this next tunnel and a couple times after, mice will try to ambush you. Memorize their locations and send a charge shot to exterminate. Near the end of this screen, call Rush to grab the final letter A, giving us the ultimate weapon we won't be seeing for a long while. Back on top of the train, stall under the next three train mets as usual and be prepared to make a run for it when you reach these oil cans. The two bomb thrones will overshoot their mark, but you won't. Swap to Rush Jet at the ledge, fly over exactly three train mets, and drop down at the logs. Take out one more bomb throne, stop to charge a shot, and fire it right as you run off. Get the totally harmless you don't out of the way and enter the boss door to fight Charge Man. Charge Man is somewhat infamous among players attempting damageless runs to the point some would say the fight is RNG. But what if I told you damageless Charge Man is 100% consistent? When he begins the battle, jump over his opening charge attack. He'll walk towards you about three quarters of the screen's distance, during which you can hit him with Power Stone twice through abuse of the weapon menu, which erases your projectiles. Equip Super Arrow and glue your eyes to this X on the background wall. When he passes it, jump, fire, and land on the arrow. If done correctly, Charge Man will always perform his falling rock attack. When the rocks are about to fall, pause buffer to safely confirm their location and block them with Star Crash if necessary. Once that's done, Charge Man will charge attack, beginning the cycle anew. If you mess up the super arrow jump and he doesn't do the falling rock attack, it's less optimal, but still entirely workable. One last note, if you get his health down to exactly three hits left, go all out with Power Stone until Charge Man runs out of charge. Every boss of the initial eight is now defeated. It's finally time for a family reunion in Blue's Castle. As always, from this point forward, weapon energy will not reset when moving to a new level. We've got to work with what we've got until we beat the game. Blue Stage 1's first screen features flying turrets and sumatorons. Memorize their positions and most can be taken out same as usual. For this sumatoron, hug the lower wall and watch as he adorably believes he's a ferocious monster. When you reach this indoor area, charge up a shot, walk down onto the lower ledge, and fire. Don't worry about the upper sumatoron, he'll just run to find his friend. Up the ladder, trigger the first two Herarians to drop down the pit. Then call Rush and fly as high as you can. To get a high enough rush start, press the fire button and jump forward slightly after. If you're high enough, the third Hirarian will harmlessly fall past. On the third screen, enjoy the calming rain, take out the last Zubail, charge the buster, and get ready to act fast. Fall facing left, release your charge shot on landing, and jump over the Zubail sneaking behind. Drop again, walk up to this ledge, and call Rush to jet over a harmless Dacho. 
Climb up the ladder and immediately do a max height rush jet to skip the disappearing platform maze before the blocks spawn in. Another trickier and deadlier maze awaits. If you don't jump off rush as soon as possible, you can get pushed down into the spikes. Use rush coil to take the upper path in the next room, taking out both Sue bales before sliding. There are two unique enemies here called rounders. They're harmless while standing still and mostly harmless while moving around, but I have gotten hit by them at least once. Take no chances. Use your choice of special weapon on the last Sue bale and enter the first boss battle against Darkman 1 with a full charge. Hit him with four charge shots, then go for a left field play with Charge Kick. It may only deal a measly one damage, but Rockman is invulnerable to most damage sources for the duration of each kick, including Darkman and his bullets. Charge Kick back and forth about a dozen times to turn Darkman's lights off. Advance to Blue Stage 2. Carefully climb up to the right ladder, then remember you're a dumb stupid idiot and climb back down. It's finally time to make use of our M-Tank, restoring all weapon energy. This may seem like a waste, but golly gee, look at that! A replacement M-Tank has spontaneously willed itself into existence! Fun fact, I actually had to research all the M-Tank locations in the game myself because most of the maps online are blatantly incorrect. M-Tanks only appear if you don't have one in your inventory. The creators of these maps were hoarding an M-Tank, so they just sort of assumed this suspiciously symmetrical room only had goodies on one side. Use two crystal eye shots on the shield turret closest to you, then gyro attack on the far one before grabbing the tank. When looping back to the left side, you can safely ignore the right turret as you make your escape. At the top is a room filled with Pukapellis and train mats. In the last stretch, a Pukapelli and train met will spawn extremely close together. Do a jumping charge shot for the Pukapelli, swap to Star Crash, catch the bullet with your teeth, and finish the met off. This next screen can be breezed down with Rush Jet, then there's a way more stressful conveyor belt room. Use Rush for a 2 centimeter trip and swap back to Star Crash to block the falling bomb. Keep Star Crash on the rest of the screen, waiting a bit at each conveyor for a potential bomber appearance. Up the sequence of ladders is a weapon energy refill you'll definitely want to give to Star Crash. There are a couple more flying turrets way above you. If you stop moving as soon as they spawn, they'll perform a magic trick and disappear. Spam pellets in the upper tunnel until the drop. Careful after the bounders, there's a met cannon to your immediate left at the top of the ladder. As long as you know it's there, you'll have plenty of time to counter. Further up, use Gravity Hold to take out the Pukapellis. Then comes one of the most important, most difficult tricks in the entire run, the Bathroom Break. As hard as it is to tear yourself away, this is a pretty long run. You've gotta go rehydrate, dehydrate, maybe grab something to eat, and definitely grab a couple lattes. With your own personal well-being taken care of, ruin the Sumatorons and climb up, methodically taking out each Pukapelli and another Sumatoron on along the way. Before proceeding past this upper platform, charge the buster, jump down and hug the wall, shoot your charge shot when the Pukapelli comes in range, and say goodbye to its furry friend. At the following ledge, toss a pellet. After a successful game of fetch, equip Crystal Eye for a Darkman rematch. Darkman 2's pattern is simple. He's walking here. Every time he takes damage, he'll walk here a little bit faster. He's possibly the simplest boss in the franchise, but thanks to his spinning shield hitbox, he's somehow one of the hardest damageless in the game. Thankfully, Crystal Eye can phase through the shield, so you can focus entirely on jumping until Darkman is sent walking there. Enter Blue's Castle 3. This first room features a bunch of Joes. Memorize all their locations, preemptively aim a propeller, spawn them into it, and finish with gravity. There are a few screens in a row with enemies you should already know how to handle. After a spinning platform challenge is an outdoor area. Call Rush to fly above it, but not all the way above. Once you pass over the highest turret, make a descent to pass under the far wall and safely land inside. The next outdoor screen features a snaking platform. When the platform loops over some spikes, use Rush Jet to make the distance without fear. You won't have the time to take it slow when fighting the upcoming Pukapellis. Run through with the Buster and Gyro attack or Star Crash in an emergency. At the ladder, swap to Napalm Bomb, which allows for a totally safe takedown of the Power Muscler in four shots. You'll need that number memorized when another Power Muscler ambushes you below. Fire two bombs in front, slide under, and finish him off with two more. Climb up this next ladder with a charge, spam a few shots at the Power Muscler, retreat, and swap to Power Stone to finish him off. 
careful not to forget the free E-Tank on the way up. On the next screen, head to the bottom ledge, immediately fire and ride a super arrow, and enter the boss fight against Freezy Deezy, who will require a bit of practice to get down. The jumping volley appears tricky, but is easy to dodge when you have it memorized. Stay a mid-distance, and when he jumps, calmly walk under. The Freeze Ray throws a wrench in the pattern. He'll always use the Freeze Ray if he locks you against a wall, and while a skilled player could abuse that, I am not a skilled player. When it's fired from far away, erase it with Star Crash, but if you're locked near the edge, swap to Charge Kick. Now, technically, Charge Kick doesn't make you immune to the Freeze Ray, but being frozen doesn't actually hurt you. We take full advantage with an extended Immortal Charge Kick that ends with Freezy fruitlessly jumping past. While dodging all this, keep spamming Gyro Attack until Freezy is finally Deezy. It's time to finally unmask Blues in the final level, Blues Castle 4. The level segment is functionally a cutscene, so calm your nerves and head into a moment that's been fated to occur ever since our journey started seven years ago. That's right, Blues proves definitively that this was never about honor, taking advantage of our lack of control to hit us during a cutscene. Sorry everybody, but Blues is just that big a dick. You definitively, legally, objectively, in fact, cannot beat Rockman 5 without getting hit is what complete and total losers would say. Fortunately, I'm a professional loser, so I did literally any research. Doesn't this quote-unquote damage feel a bit off? Look at the hit in the cutscene and compare it to a hit in normal gameplay. There are multiple discrepancies. Normally, when Rockman gets hit, there's a particle effect above him, which is absent in the cutscene. Normally, when Rockman gets hit, he blinks to indicate he has invulnerability frames, which does not happen in the cutscene. Normally, when Rockman gets hit, he moves slightly backwards, which does not happen in the cutscene. You might think maybe Rockman is too close to the wall to move any further, but look at what happens at the end of the cutscene. Rockman jumps towards the wall, meaning there was definitely space for him to fall backward. If I didn't know any better, I'd say the getting hit mechanic isn't happening in this cutscene at all. Roof, 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 roof. Bow wow. What's that comment section? You're saying my life bar went down, so that definitely means I definitely took a hit? Gosh, it really does look like the life bar went down, doesn't it? But hold on one second. For the sake of research, I moved over to a different emulator, which allows us to edit the RAM on the fly. It's not normally possible to enter this cutscene with anything less than maximum health since the short level prior doesn't have a single damage source other than insta-kills. But by editing the RAM, I can manually set my current health to zero. With your health at zero, you can still walk around, but the moment you get hit, you instantly die. Let's see what happens when we enter the quote-unquote getting hit cutscene with zero health. Not what you expected, was it? 
Blues's bullet didn't damage us. It gave us 1 HP. And then from 1 HP, the L tank refilled our health all the way back up to zero. The L tank doesn't refill your health to maximum. It refills it to the value it had before the cutscene started. I tried going in with one less HP than Max, and sure enough, at the end of the cutscene, I had one less HP than Max. I even went in with exactly one HP, and Rockman's HP didn't change at all for the entirety of the cutscene. The getting hit animation isn't the actual getting hit animation. It doesn't have any of the actual gameplay effects of getting hit. The health interactions are programmed in a super weirdo way completely exclusive to this one singular instance, having nothing in common with what happens when you get hit and ultimately has zero tangible effect. None of this is real. It's all smoke and mirrors. Blues is incredible magic trick where he makes you think he hit you with a vague facsimile because, let's be honest, he's not actually good enough to hit us. The idea that you take an unavoidable hit in this cutscene is a myth which is thoroughly busted. <laughs> Now that we've solved that mystery, let's get back to this 100% for real reals damageless run. If Darkman throws his shield, jump over and under, let loose a charge shot, and jump to the safety of the opposite side. If Darkman shoots, it will always be three bullets with identical timing. Jump over the first two, let loose the charge shot while falling, and slide under the third. You might need to adjust charge shot timing depending on the position of Darkman's shield, but don't experiment too much. Any significant change to the routine risks throwing off your timing. With Darkman defeated, Rockman will make a startling discovery. Blues was Dr. Wily all along. That's right, Rockman's nemesis is his own brother, the brilliant robotic alien zombie scientist, Dr. Blues Wily. With no other choice, we take on Blue's challenge in the true final gauntlet, Wily Castle. Immediately move down the ladder, hang on, and refill all your weapon energy with your M tank. Climb back up to the pleasant magical appearance of a replacement and don't forget to grab the E tank for good measure. Jump down the spike path at the center of the screen. From there, fall left and about face to the right. Hug the spikes on the right side to make a safe landing. Since the prior screen didn't scroll horizontally, Rockman will be further right than normally possible, which we can use to our advantage. The wiggle room lets us jump over these spinning spikes without scrolling the screen too far to the right and thus preventing the upcoming toss machines from spawning. Be ready when climbing the exit ladder to charge shot left the instant you reach ground level to take out two cannons. Gravity and Buster up to the next screen and equip Super Arrow. Aim it slightly above ground level of the spike hallway and enjoy a latte sip. Gravity hold the next room's ambush, and in the conveyor platform room, skip the first platforms with rush coil. You can then jump onto the top conveyors and rush jet to the end. On the next screen, back with a vengeance, is Dustman's trash compactor. The only enemies to be found here are met cannons, several being in incredibly annoying positions. The second in particular is in a tight cubby after a crusher. Prep Star Crash in advance to give yourself the necessary time to prepare the buster, about face, and start your barrage. The last couple mats are positioned just behind thin crushers. For these, I chose to repeatedly get in cowardly pot shots before retreating. Outside the compactor is a cocoa. Farm this cocoa for weapon energy, particularly gravity hold, which just so happens to be the safest way to take out the cocoa itself. Gravity Hold will be useful in both the next room and the final room, where Lyrics and Shield turrets team up in a tight hallway. These groups can be erased in two gravity flashes before they ever get the chance to shoot. At the boss door, swap to Crystal Eye to face Big Pets. Big Pets is only vulnerable after shooting its lower spike platforms, which can then be jumped on to reach the necessary height. Meanwhile, Big Pets will regularly spawn two falling mini pets. Just an FYI, sometimes you'll only see one mini pets, but I'm 99% certain that's because one of the two spawned at the left edge of the screen and immediately despawned itself. Play ultra patient. Stand by for a moment when the left side of the screen is completely safe. 
While waiting, you might want to swap to Star Crash. With a good dice roll, make your ascent. You'll have just barely enough time to get one or two hits safely. With Big Pets Big Dead, we enter Wily Castle 2. Use whatever weapon you please to get through the first Terrarians risk-free. You won't need the ammo since two screens down will once again encounter a free M-Tank as well as a free E-Tank. Buster the Swim Met with the usual rushing Buster Strat, swap to Rush Jet to skip over the wheel platforms and land on the fourth wheel. Swap to Gravity Hold so you won't have to aim when jumping towards the next net. Spawn Rush Jet at the end of the spike hallway and extremely carefully hop on. Push down into the wheel platforms to properly align Rush with the upcoming net, kill it, and jump off in one fluid motion. You'll need to gravity hold one more met and the rest can be Buster. Out of the water are some met mommies. Go all out with gravity hold, casting it the moment you land in each mommy's range. Careful on this next screen, there are a couple mice waiting to ambush you as you focus on the Tabons above. There's another Coco to farm weapon energy, then two power musclers who are completely helpless against our power stone. Enter the boss door equipped with Star Crash for the boss fight against Sir Krang. This should be pathetically simple. Even if you mess up while dodging the falling bombs, Star Crash acts as an extra safety net, and the singular bullet when Sir Krang drops down is slow and predictable. Careful though, there's one moment you may make a mistake. While Sir Krang is exploding, there's a couple seconds where you're still in control. Take the opportunity to use up your M tank. Wily Castle 3 opens with the game's final M tank as well as an E tank. There's no way to leave this screen and come back, so that M tank is a one time chance. Grab both, charge the Buster, and use it to obliterate the upcoming Twin Cannon, the only standard enemy in this level. Time for the initial eight rematches. The same strats apply, but I highly, highly, highly recommend going for Charge Man and Crystal Man early on. Since they both use variable amounts of Star Crash, taking them on first gives you a definitive ammo count to work with if you want to use it on somebody else. It's also important to note that I highly, 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 highly recommend not bothering fighting these losers in the first place. There's a cheese trick I very stupidly chose not to know exists before doing the run. If you position yourself exactly correctly, fire a super arrow, jump on it, and slide left and right just right, Rockman will phase into the wall and into the next screen, which just so happens to be where you fight the level's boss, Wily Press. There are no special strats here, we've just gotta wait for him to try to crush us and counter with a charge shot. To figure out where to run to, I recommend keeping your eyes on Wily Wily's furthest position. If he stops there, you know to slide away, and if he doesn't stop there, you know to jump forward. With Wily pressed, we move into the final, final level, Wily Castle 4. Use Rush Jet on this first screen to take the scenic route above a dacho. There's a twin cannon to the left, which you'll have just enough time to take out. On this last screen is another dacho with a ceiling above, the only dacho in the entire game who vaguely stands a chance of hitting you. As always, jump in with a charge shot and get in two more pellets to finish it off. With the boss door reached, we're ready for the final battle against Wily Machine number five. Take zero risks and use the babiest of baby strats. Run into the left edge of the screen with Star Crash, waiting for any of Wily Machine's attacks. When that attack is eaten, or if Wily uses the harmless vacuum, swap to Super Arrow, get in exactly one shot, and swap back to repeat the process. Be on your toes, Wily will sometimes fire an extremely quick missile, so you might have to swap back ASAP. When either weapon runs out, you can use your final M tank for a full refill, giving more than enough ammo to win this war of attrition. While he's not done yet, you'll now enter the truly true final battle against Wily Capsule 2. Now is when we reveal our secret weapon. We're going to beat Wily. When Wily Machine number five is blowing up, equip the beat weapon, summon beat, and stand such that beat is positioned on the screen slightly in front of your life bar. Wily teleports around the arena while invisible and could hypothetically be difficult to dodge with bad RNG. But if Beat smells blood, he never lets his target go, becoming omniscient of Wily's location even while invisible and thus telling you exactly where not to be. Every time Beat hits Wily, he'll return to you, then if Wily is still vulnerable, he'll lock on again. Positioned just right, you can keep this combo going infinitely. If, however, you drop the combo, don't give up hope. 
When Wily is about to reappear, stand center screen and rapidly pause buffer. Once you get a read on Wily, summon Beat and revive the combo. With constant knowledge of Wily's position, he poses no threat whatsoever, turning his health bar into a time limit. <laughs> Easiest game in the world! Don't even have to try! <laughs> Two days, baby! Two days! With Dr. Blue's Wily thoroughly beaten for the fifth and final time, the Rockman 5 Mr. Perfect Run is mission complete. Special thanks to all Patreon backers, including a non-42, Salty Sweet, Leslam, Alex Nelson, Vincent Hall. Can you say hi to Crustacean Creep for me? Sure, hi Crustacean Creep, Crustacean Creep. Evil Game Champ is like, bad evening nobody, and then welcome forward to WH Facts, the offline on paper board game movie. Nathaniel Kalita, Jorb. Birthface says, you think changing the vocal tier can stop my love and support? Uh, Ark Holmes, now I only want to triumph. Plesiosaurs may have given live birth to well-developed babies and were attentive parents who lived in pods. Attempted wholesomeness. Literal cat Minley Queen Cackerel is gay and doesn't go to bed on time. Reblog if you too are gay and or don't go to bed on time. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. This list of names was brought to you by viewers like me, Doodlesack12, Trish Handler. Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo, I've got a brand new challenge for you. Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Dames, if you are bad at video games. Ephemadon, Darknet frequently a doofus, occasionally an idiot. It's always a fool. Brizgy, Ian Beck, Biohazard. Oh, hey, that's me, Fluff System. Chris Gooselin, Chloe Charette. Rass Barrel, Arsonist Cat, Sorio99, Cody Merchant, Madison, Touch Tone, Banana Phone. Landfair, Pawulga Neil, Gogari, Truan, Drob, William, Silio, Go Go Goach. Geyserk says, please don't forget to look after your physical, mental, and emotional health while gaming, speedrunning, and challenge. Everyone's favorite, Clan Ghost Bear McWarrior, Aurelia, Moomin Biscuit, Trans Rights to Human Rights. Fella, Can of Red Lions, Morgan Duna Nix, Getsugaru, Love Story Gaming, TTV, Freely Lily, Celica, Teheka, Kelzini, Flame Solace. Macaroni Cat personally endorses running away like a little sissy baby. Autistic Yu Gi Oh! Neo Sandman 4040 Spartan Style. Hayleron wants to know where the Luigi fanfiction is, Game Champ Jing Shadow. Random Internet Cat is a random cat on the internet and should not, under any circumstances, be trusted to do non cat things. Kimberly, the Gamer Bee, finally started HRT. Daybreak, the Auroran Goddess, an overambitious dumbass, needs to chug multiple liters of 5 hour energy to get shit done. Tourbit, Gaming Medic, Zeta is pretty invalid. Zentil, Joshua Bennett, Lonely Agent J. Nicole, the Gamer Girl, and Gamer Girl switched to a new credit card and forgot to update Patreon for Sonic 1 and Knuckles. Mine Planet 84, Halo Lucky, Captain Skelly, Fictional Breach, Valkyrie Kane and Skullduggery Pleasant, Starfish at Large, Idramian, Ella, Fenelian, BJ Mashed Potato finally updated his card info to make Game Champ read more and is still very sorry. Wayne Moan Knot, Shadow Fox 0002, Johnny Von Tungle, CK the Penguin supports Miss Champ and states that trans rights are human rights. Eden Osp, the half dragon, half witch with half a mind, half ass, half of this name. Undersea Rexy VT, Penny Collector 1, Tim Tam Toe Jam, Stop Sign EX, Corporal High, Detective Geo, Cytra, who was going to make the name changes into a consistent bit but forgot to. Ariane Signalis is the Elser. Signalis fan club and challenges you to play Signalis without pointing at any of the characters in Cassie and Raccoonah. Tell me how much this video sucks in the comments below and get out of my house. Quagsire is the best Pokemon. This is not a patron name. This is me, GamerChamp3000, genuinely stating the truth. Man 9001 is already demanding Rockman 6. No pressure. Alizard, K, Paul Morton, Bug Life, Emma Not Emma. All of the names on the right side of GameChamp's screen. Eris, Harmonious Nature, A Warlock of Unimaginable Power, Puma Loaf, The Cat Loafing Puma, Georgie Lyubinoff, February Meme, Tony Conch, Fake Token, 
fan. Jetstream Jackie wants you to know that her cat Goggles is both fluffy and gay. Simoris. Amber like the resin, but without mosquitoes, please. Xerixan, the A-rank with Yoshi no one can achieve. Bluebee, threw for my hawa at Lurker Below. Saint Lesbian and Silly World, 99th time. Lodestar, your number one fan. Chowder. The Fyriga lit by Thundaza, read thin and immune to Blizzara, but not Blizzaga. V-Man 6785. Gay Bastage, Fujoshi Urinal. They're called Transformers, not Cisformers. Lula Lockhart likes alliteration. Psyche Clips, Alice, I'm madly in love with you. Ferris V5 craves a latte every time Game Champ mentions sipping one and now has enough caffeine in their blood to see through time. As your llama, a dubious little creature. Quack Bunch of Sevens, Jared Bowser, Junma. It's my turn with the gender, you can't have it. Queen Snoo, the dog cat possum girl thing, is very good at gender and just might seal yours in the dead of night. Even rats need to take a nap sometimes. Transanex Princess Juno says no, Pac Man, drugs are bad. The other 2,999 game champs in the basement Tyler Beauregard, Abigail Dandelion, Emir Isabella said like Emir plus Isabella, Goro Akechi of the Justice Arcana, Kayo Marsali, Storm 7, Hank Shea Wimbledon, Working Retail, Adorsky, Naughty Neo 13, Kaya, your local trans of Ali who is currently casting Fireball, Hoshizora, Soul VT, Paper Mario 332 humbly asks Game Champ 3000 to do a challenge run on Pizza Tower, also hi me in the future. I, Miss Gamer Champ, take another step towards the ultimate mission complete, being bad at video games. Haley McLean, the gayest Minotaur, gayest of all possible Minotaurs. Robobot fan, Gino Playsync, and Benet and Ba. Let me know how much this video sucks and how to improve in the comments below. There's just one more left, and get out of my house.